Would you like to build a keyboard? I'm the person to ask. I built 500 of them. I'm Jack from OLKB. This guides for the Plank Keyboard Kit, but applies to many other keyboards as well. I'm assuming you already have a kit, but if you don't, here's what you need. A PCB, top plate, case, switches, keycaps, screws, a stabilizer, and rubber feet. We're going to start off with a stabilizer. This is approximately how it goes together. There are two different types of cherry stabilizers. The PCB ones that look like this and get mounted into the PCB, and the plate ones that look like this and get mounted into the plate. If you look at the bottom of the pieces, you'll see a small tab missing from one corner of both of them. This indicates their alignment. Once you place the smaller one into the bigger one, you can take the metal bar and place it into the slot on one side. It'll go into the bottom half of the smaller piece and then lock into the bigger piece. You repeat this for both sides. The stabilizer is optional. Before installing, place a two-unit key on a switch to see if you'll need one. It's worth noting these are only used on Cherry MX boards with the MIT layout, and not boards with Mantia switches or the grid layout. The plate one is done in a similar manner, but has different offsets for the larger pieces. These are generally only used in hand-wired boards. In most kits sold by myself and Mastrop use the PCB stabilizer only. As you'll see later, the bar faces towards the outside of the keyboard, and it can cause problems with the compatibility in some cases. Here's a quick demonstration of how to place it into the plate. You start with the front end, place it below the plate, snap both into place, there you have it. For this build, we'll be using a PCB stabilizer, and so you put that in. Find the top of the PCB and your stabilizer, and orient the stabilizer towards the back of the board. The orientation may change depending on your PCB. Two tabs will slide under the PCB, and then snap into place. It should move freely once inserted, and the plate will fit over it nicely. It can sometimes be snug, but it'll fit in with a light amount of force. Once your board is ready to solder, you can start placing key switches. These are PCB mounted switches, so they're a little harder to press in. The plate mounted switches are much easier to use. Make sure they seat all the way to the PCB. It's a common mistake for them not to seat all the way and then have difficulty fitting into the milled case. I repeat this process for every switch on the board. Oftentimes you'll find a switch like this, the bent pin. It's easy to correct it with the finger or fingernail, slightly pushing it up until it's at the right angle. Once you have all your switches in place, it's useful to flip over the board and do a quick inspection of all the pins. If the pins are folded down, you'll have problems later and need to remove the switch and correct them. This is very difficult to do once you've begun soldering. If you look closely, you can see I missed two different pins on here I had to fix later. This is very difficult, especially with PC mounted switches. If you'd like to add LEDs, now is the time to do it. Cherry Amex switches fit 3mm LEDs. LEDs have an anode and a cathode, or plus and minus. The anode, or the plus side, is the longer of the two, so they'll need to be oriented like this when inserting them. It'll slide through the switch like this, and come out the back. You can then bend it over to make it easier to assemble. On the Plank PCB, it's worth noting that there are multiple configurations for the LEDs depending on which slot you're using. This is the soldering iron setup I'll be using. The solder is leaded, and the soldering iron goes up to about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. You can occasionally wipe it on a wet sponge to clean it off. When soldering, you'll want to make sure to heat up the element and the solder together so that the flux can properly heat both of the items. I usually start with the left pin so you can easily see whether it's bent down or not before having to desolder the switch to fix it. You'll repeat this process for all 47 or 48 switches on the board. It's also important to keep adequate ventilation during this process, as the fumes are harmful. Once completed soldering, it's a good idea to test the board by plugging into the computer making sure the light comes on, and test all the switches, along with the basic visual inspection. From here you can place the rubber feet on the bottom of the case, and get ready for final assembly. You'll want to do this before you put the keycaps on. You'll need to slide the keyboard in at a slight angle in order to clear the case. You should then pivot into place. 
you can start screwing in screws. From here, you have a working keyboard. Install your keycaps for an added comfort.